I think it's safe to say, thanks in large part to the widespread use of social media, that activism today is very different from the activism in the days of yore. I mean, so-called hashtag movements like Me Too and Black Lives Matter have been major drivers of social change. Me Too has helped encourage women to speak up about sexual assault and harassment, and Black Lives Matter has led to a national conversation on race and policing. But despite these notable examples, however, most hashtag movements prove ineffective at solving the challenges that they set out to address, simply because hashtag movements come and go in the blink of an eye. Now, this is what's known as slacktivism. The term refers to an act of showing support for a cause online while not actually doing anything towards helping bring out a real, lasting change. But this hasn't stopped American actress Alyssa Milano from calling for a nationwide sex strike on social media this past week. Milano felt the need to call on this sex strike, oh how proud our labor movement forefathers will be, um, after Georgia's government Brian Kemp signed the heartbeat bill, which makes it illegal to have an abortion after a heartbeat has been detected in the womb. So this is typically approximately six weeks into a pregnancy. So Milano tweeted last Friday, our reproductive rights are being erased. Until women have legal control over our own bodies, we just cannot risk pregnancy. Join me by not having sex until we get bodily autonomy back. I'm calling for a hashtag sex strike. Pass it on. The irony of it all is that, of course, that abstinence is like the oldest, simplest alternative to abortion that pro-lifers have touted since time immemorial. So this is playing right into the hands of pro-lifers, Milano. But wouldn't you know it, a lot of people thought it was a good idea, or at least they said they did online. With old school activism, there was a process of natural selection. I mean, you had to be at least motivated enough to show up at a rally or event. Online, you just need to fire off a retweet or click like. The most notorious example of this is, of course, the Coney 2012 campaign, which worked to raise awareness of the war crimes of Joseph Coney, a warlord infamous for using children as soldiers in Uganda. The campaign exploded online, gaining massive amounts of attention and raising millions of dollars in donations, but then just as quickly fizzled out. I mean, as of today, Coney is still at large, but for a brief moment in 2012, literally millions of people felt super good about themselves for donating 20 bucks to the effort. Good job, team. The fact of the matter is that internet celebrity, clout, viralness, whatever you want to call it, does not lead to policy changes as often as we'd like to think. Now, make no mistake the Georgia bill is anti-abortion, since most women who aren't trying to conceive don't even know they're pregnant until around the time the heartbeat can be detected. But look, regardless of which side of the abortion debate you fall on, I think we can all agree that there are more effective ways to go about opposing the bill than a quote-unquote sex strike. And it's also worth noting that the abortion debate isn't as black and white as many other critics in Milano make it seem. Proposing a sex strike against men plays on a common misconception that men, or old Republican men in particular, are the driving force behind the pro-life movement. In reality, according to a 2018 Gallup poll, 47% of women identify as pro-life compared to 49% of men. I'm sorry, but a 2% difference isn't enough to point the finger at any one gender. Does Milano think a pro-choice man should deny his pro-life girlfriend sex until, you know, she changes her mind? What's even more interesting, however, is that only 18% of Americans, men and women, are completely anti-abortion under any circumstances. A whole 50% of Americans think abortion should be legal under certain circumstances. Look, whatever your views are on abortion, Milano and other celebrities shouldn't be resorting to hashtags to affect policy change. And to her credit, she is doing something far more meaningful. Milano, along with other film stars like Ben Stiller, Amy Schumer, Alec Baldwin, and dozens more, penned a letter to Georgia politicians pledging to not work in the state if the bill was passed. I mean, assuming they stick to this pledge, of course. This is a real, you know, hit em where it hurts kind of action. The state of Georgia isn't going to belly up over this, but at least these celebrities are putting their money where their mouth is on this issue. They are pledging real, meaningful action, I mean, including some that could pose cost or inconvenience on their professional lives. It's not much, but it's something real. Calling for a sex strike on social media? Not so much.